they have generally very white skin and piercing black eyes. They are covered in scales and they have sharp fangs. Okay, how do the Orions look? How would we recognize them? There are Orionoids that are human. There are Orionoids that are reptilian. There are some that have what you might consider a squid-like face with tentacles coming out of their nose. There are very hairy monkey-like Orionoids. There are feline and canine Orionoids. There are some that we couldn't get a perfect description of from your base of comparisons in your reality with different sorts of textured skin and scales and features that you might not immediately recognize or have a way to describe in simple terms. But yes, because the Orion civilization is an empire that has come to enslave or control many different planets and species, the Orionoids in that sense are very. How come the refugees they develop on Earth or somewhere else? Yes, these humans are similar to you. Remember that humans were created by the Anunnaki, and so you have Anunnaki DNA in you. And these Anunnaki beings are related to many different beings out there. And so you are not the only humanoid beings in this universe. Yes, I understand that, but the, there was an origin. Say the Anunnaki created the first humans from Sasquatch and their own DNA. So the humans in the Orion system were also from those developments and then taken somewhere else. They're not exactly the same as you, but they are similar to you. They are again a splice of DNA of primates and some Anunnaki-like beings. Ah, uh, but different primates from other planets. Correct. So I'm curious how come the primates on other planets and the primates here were so similar that they both end up as humans. Primates, how did they get all over the place? There was a lot of transporting of species in early times. <laughs> and genetic experiments to create different sorts of beings. Yes, you said that many of the animals were brought here, so that I, I understand now. Yes. You said that the future, to use that word, of the Orions is somehow tangled up with our situation. Can you explain that more? So there is a way that the souls collectively come together as soul groups and choose to incarnate together in different worlds. And this was the case with the gal great galactic history, beginning in the times of Lyra, the first civilization. As conflict emerged, souls chose to incarnate into different star systems. And the souls that resisted the Lyra conflict incarnated into Vega, and as Lyra came to attack Vega, souls began to incarnate into Orion, at which point, as the Orion conflict progressed, souls began to incarnate into Sirius and into the Pleiades, and eventually the Anunnaki came and created humans. But these Civilizations are all connected at a soul level. In other words, souls became weary of the conflict and the karma of their worlds. And as groups of souls, they decided to work that karma out on other planes of existence, on other planets, retaining their connection to their past lives yet opening themselves to the power of transformation through incarnation on a different plane. Where do reptilians fit in 
with what you've described about the Galactic Alliance and the um, Orion. The reptilians weaseled their way into your world long ago. There are reptilian beings in so many different parts of the world, or galaxy rather. And the Anunnaki were part reptilian, remember this? They were part reptilian, part humanoid. And so some of that reptilian DNA still exists within you as well. And later there were more modifications done to your genome by the draconian reptilian beings who came to visit your world after the fall of ancient Egypt and generally around that time. Ancient Egypt. Okay. And so these draconian beings made some promises to humans of that time offering them resources, offering them teachings in exchange for the genetic modifications that they m imbued into the human DNA, as well as ways that they imprinted your consciousness more with fear. They saw the original codes that the Anunnaki had imprinted you with, and they sought to enhance certain things that would make you more akin to them. And because this genetic modification t took place, there are some humans that can have a telepathic connection with draconian reptiles, and some occasionally even become possessed by them unconsciously or consciously. Okay, thank, thank you very much. Can, can you explain the origin of the Draconians? I think you said they were created by the Anunnaki as well. The Draconians were cousins of the Anunnaki. They evolved on their own timeline, and they came from a system called Alpha Centauri. In their world, they were warring beings, and they still are warring beings to various extents. They attempt to control other civilizations, and they often use trickery rather than battle to do so. They are incredibly clever beings and very hypnotic beings, and they are masters of deception and confusion. Okay, what do, what do the Draconians look like? How would we recognize them? They have generally very white skin and piercing black eyes. They are covered in scales and they have sharp fangs. They have faces that look lizard-like, but they have rather short noses. Their piercing eyes evoke fear in many though they also give off this hypnotic charm that emanates a certain power. Sometimes they have slightly different patterns on their skin and scales, occasionally involving black stripes. Okay, and the size, are, we spoke to various extraterrestrials, are there big differences in size or all much the same height? These beings are generally between five foot and five foot and eight inches. Okay, and the other extraterrestrials we talked about before, we all seem to be a similar size. Well, we as Pleiadians are slightly taller than you, generally, and slender. The Syrians are akin to the Draconians, between five foot and five foot eight or ten. Okay. Um, I, I think um, I have enough questions for the day. Is there something you'd like to say in summing up or that you think is relevant? Well, we want to remind you that you have a choice in who you connect with. And it might be curious to know about some of these negative beings because there are indeed some dark forces in your world and individuals who, in their own ignorance, inadvertently become connected with some of these beings and channel their energy into this world unknowingly.
But beyond that, unless you choose to deliberately connect with some of these dark forces, they have no influence over you. Remember that we as the Galactic Alliance and the, especially the hybrid races are drawn to your world to protect you. And we come around your world and our ships to make sure that there are positive influences supporting your planet in this growth. But you as humans have to make the choice to consciously evolve yourselves because we cannot do it for you. But we want to, you to know that you are protected. Okay, thank you very much. That's all for today. And our great thanks and our unconditional love to you as well. We wish you a fantastic rest of your day then. Thank you, thank you. Spaceship of Babel, we are guiding through the stars on a five year mission beyond Jupiter and Mars. A celestial encounter on a future now is a and you both hear us coming as we whisper in the dark. There's an Ewok close behind me as we try to disembark here. Yeah, the Ewok and Obi as we whisper in the dark. Like a spark, I am lying, Alice singing as we.